What's up you guys, Bill Widmer coming at you with a quick video on how to use Cognitive SEO. This is a tool that I use to optimize my blog posts, my product pages, my category pages, pretty much everything um, around a specific keyword. So it has all kinds of tools like inbound link analysis, rank tracking, content visibility, some really cool stuff. But what I want to focus on is the keyword tool and content assistant. So I actually use this tool to determine the keywords that need to go on my page. So you may have heard me talk about LSI keywords in the past. This is very similar, but it's a very easy way to optimize a page by including certain keywords that Google considers synonymous or related to that main keyword. So rather than all that fancy LSI latent semantic indexing jargon, let's just show you an example. So RV accessories. Let's say you want to rank a page around RV accessories. We'll analyze that keyword. The keyword explorer is a way you can do like keyword research and see what else is out there. Um, you can organize this by relevancy, number of words, etc. And a quick side note pro tip, cost per click is a great metric to use when doing keyword research because a high cost per click is typically associated with a high return on investment. People are willing to pay a lot for a click because they make more money than they're spending. So just a little fun tip there. Uh, the next tab is ranking analysis. Now this is really interesting. It shows you the content performance of all of your competitors that are currently ranking in Google, as, long as, as well as their number of focus keywords, the number of words of the article or page, their page performance, which is kind of like their page authority, their domain performance, which is like their domain authority, if you're familiar with those terms. It's essentially how authoritative the site and the page are. And then the date it was published. So if you look here, I'm number two, the wandering RV, that's me. My content performance is only at an 84. Uh, my competitors are typically underneath me. There are some that are high way down here. But if you look, they have a lower page and domain authority than what me and Camping World and Amazon have. I'm beating Amazon because A, I have a much higher content performance, more than double theirs. But B, I've also built a ton of links directly to this page and link building is a key part of ranking an article or product page or anything like that. So anyway, enough of that extra information, how to use the tool, go to this content assistant and essentially, you're going to start optimizing your content. Press this button. Paste your content right into here. So I'm going to grab it from the article real quick. Oops, wrong link. Give me a second. It's a long article, a lot to copy. OK, and then once you copy that, paste it right into the content box. You can also import from a URL, but that brings code over, so it looks a little sloppy. And then copy and paste the page title. And then you hit this check score button, and it will show you the content performance of your page. So essentially, the content performance is the number of keywords of the primary keyword and the related keywords that you use on your page in comparison to other pages. So it'll and it'll tell you this content can rank in the top three Google results based on the content performance. Again, there's other factors like building links and user engagement and all this kind of stuff, but just a rough idea. So I am using only 34 out of the 95 focus keywords. These are the 34 keywords I'm already using. That's great. These are keywords I should use. So I can add these keywords directly in, but make sure you add them naturally into the content. You're not writing for robots. You're writing for people. If you write for only robots, People are going to see that, you're going to lose user engagement, you're going to have a high bounce rate on your website, and you're not going to rank despite being well optimized for a particular keyword. And the readability score, the higher that is, the better. That's essentially telling you um, how easy it is to read your content and understand your content. And then it also shows the words on page. So try and use these keywords naturally in your article. I'll give you an example. My original intro said, um, you can only fit so much stuff in your camper. That's why you should bring the absolute best RV accessories possible. But then one of the keywords I should use was RV camping. So I added a nice little touch to the intro that says RV camping is a blast, but you can only fit so much stuff in your camper. Now notice I also have camper 
uh, RV accessories, and other keywords in that intro. So try and tie these keywords in naturally within your article. And then keywords you should use more often. It's exactly what it sounds like. Just use these more than once. Use them as many times as you can. And the ones with the uh, little circle next to them are important keywords that you should definitely try and include and use more often. And finally, keyword stuffing is always a no-no. Uh, Google penalizes you if you try and just stuff your article full of a particular keyword because that's just not good for reading. It's not good for human interaction. Uh, you're just trying to game the system. So if you are accidentally keyword stuffing, the tool will tell you about that and then you can just remove some of that keyword from your article. And that's all there is to it. That's how to use Cognitive SEO. You get a free two-week trial to test it out. So go check it out and let me know what you think.